So we're back for another video. I had a community tab on my channel asking if you guys wanted to see a behind the scenes look at my studio and what I use to record my videos. And it was 60-40 split, but you know what? I've wanted to make this video for a long time and I'm the one that has to put in the work. <laughs> Let's take a look at what I use. So starting with my desk, I have an old tanker desk. This is a 1950s tanker desk that I bought on Marketplace. I refinished and stripped the paint off the faces of the drawers just to give it some texture and character. And I think it turned out really good. And I know it's not a an electric stand-up desk or whatever, but it works for me and I love how big it is. On top of that, the most important part probably is the computer. I'm running the MacBook Pro laptop. It's the 16 inch M3 Pro chip with the 512 gigabyte hard drive and the 36 gigabytes of RAM. So this also has the upgraded 12 core CPU and 18 core GPU. It's a beast. Overkill for what I need it. I was able to get one and I couldn't pass on it. Now because it's a 512 SSD, I have a two terabyte external drive and that is the Sabrent Toolless M.2 Thunderbolt 3 enclosure. Again, this is I've had this one for a while and it, it's running a two terabyte XPG SX8200 M.2 drive. I can edit right off of that. It makes it a lot easier. For the keyboard and mouse, I have the MX keys and the MX3 mouse and they're great. They're just simple to use. They have tons of buttons, lots of input. I might consider getting a smaller 75% mechanical keyboard at some point, but for now I'm totally pleased with this. All of that pairs into the USB dock, which I use the pluggable TBT4 UD5. This is a Thunderbolt 4 dock and it has enough slots and card readers, it's pass-through power, it can run two displays. It's great. I like it. It's not as reliable with my external hard drive, so I typically do have that plugged directly into the Mac and I find it faster anyways that way. Into the dock I also have the audio interface. So now I'm using the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 and this is the studio version. It has the headphones and the microphone that came with the kit. I don't do as many voiceover things as I used to so it doesn't really matter to me. For the output I use the Mackie CR3 X3 inch studio monitors and they sound pretty good. Good enough where I don't need to worry about running the headphones. I think I get enough input through those. And then on top of all of that I have my old Dell monitor. This is a, a Dell S3219D, so it's a 1440p monitor. Uh, I will eventually upgrade this to a 4K monitor, but I haven't had the need to yet. As far as software goes, my editing software of choice is DaVinci Resolve. So I have the studio version, the latest 19 full version. I was running the beta and I really enjoy this program. It has so many cool inputs and, and features, the color grading, the audio, everything is so good and it just keeps getting better and it is no subscription fee it's a one-time thing and i think when i bought it it was like 14 or something and every time it upgrades you get a free upgrade so i really enjoy that now as far as audio recording i use adobe audition and i'm lucky enough i get a subscription to that through work i just sync it up afterwards right in davinci and it works really well i guess the next big thing would be the camera so i'm running a sony a7 IV, and this is a full 4K camera. I have this small rig cage and panel on it for running around, and it is a great camera. The lens I'm using typically is the Sigma 24 to 70, and this is an f2.8. This is the Mark I version. I haven't bothered uh, upgrading to the second version. There's not enough improvements for me to spend the money. In front of the lens, I have a KNF Concept quarter black mist filter, and that just gives a little bit more softer bits in the light. It kind of bleeds everything, and it's hiding the 41-year-old wrinkles here. <laughs> it's a beauty filter, kind of. It just softens everything up. On top of the camera itself, I'm just running this old, newer F100 monitor. It's a field monitor. It's, I think, seven inch, big enough where I can get my framing, I can tell where I am, and see if somewhat I'm in focus. Unfortunately, it doesn't show the focus peaking or anything like that. So this is something I probably will upgrade eventually, but I just, I don't need to. 
Not yet, at least. It just runs off of the MPF960 batteries. They're the big chunky boys, and, and the life on that is really good. I don't think I've ever even had to change the battery out. Into the camera, I have a dummy battery. I was tired of changing my batteries out or having batteries die, so I went and got a Kimaru MPF2 or 2100, I think it is. It's just a pretty simple dummy battery kit for the for the Sonys. As far as my tripod goes, I, again, a lot of my stuff is newer. It's just, it's cheap and it's good enough, especially for somebody that's sitting in a studio for the most part. I don't need to have carbon fiber, whatever. I think this is the N555. Uh, I'm running a, an Artiste 36 mil ball head on it. So I changed it around a little bit. I'm just using the newer legs. I took the head off of that, put that other head on, and then on top of that head, I actually got rid of the plate that they gave you. It was a typical Arca Swiss plate, but I wanted a quick connect. So I got the Andor CL50LS, and it's been great. It has a little quick release tab. You don't have to unscrew it or anything. It holds my camera just fine. I guess we'll move on to lighting here. And for my main key light right here, I have the, the Godox SL60W, so it's a 60 watt, it's a single stage, it's not bicolor or anything like that, it's not RGB, but it's a 5700 Kelvin, I think. It's been working just fine. This is a smaller space. If I run it at like 65% here, and it's doing just great. This is the Godox SBUE 31 and a half inch or 80 centimeter light dome or diffuser. And this one I run with the grid on there. I just find it has less spill. All of that just sits on top of an old secondhand stage light stand. And I, I would have got a C stand or something like that, but this thing's light. It's I already had it and it works just fine. I had to do a little bit of modifications to it to fit the light on, but I'm glad I've done it. It just stays where it is anyway, so there's no point in spending extra money on it. For the fill lights, I use a couple of different fill lights. Not the desk light here, but the light bars. These are the Olanzi VL119s, and they come in a pair. They're full RGB. They have a bunch of different features and everything like that. I've enjoyed having these. And then I have a couple of cheap, I don't even know if they're newer, these might even be absolute no-name ones, but they're just cheap little USB lights that I have plugged in with some gels over top of them for spill in behind the monitor. I also use a young new YN300 Air, just over off to the side here, just to spill a little bit of yellow light, just to try and match some of the, the color that was coming off this light before. And I also have over here the Sprung W140 RGB. And it's a neat little light. It's nice because it's a bunch of different little programmed modes. I don't always have to use that one. When I do need it, it's nice to have. From there, I guess we'll have to talk about the overhead. I just run my iPhone. I'm running a 12 Pro Max. Eventually, I'm gonna re-upgrade this thing. The new ones, the 16s come out in a month or a couple weeks, I think. So I'll look at maybe upgrading it then. The battery life isn't as good as it used to be, and quite frankly, I just want to get an upgrade. It's been a couple years now. The overhead shoots onto this table here. So this table is just a simple foldable workbench that I picked up from uh, Princess Auto. It's kind of like Harbor Freight in the States. It's just a cheap little thing. It was probably 50 bucks. Put a cut mat on it just in case, because I will use this workbench for a workbench, but I also shoot videos on it, so. Holding on to all that is a wall mount boom arm by Newer. Extends about five and a half feet out, tucks away and folds up nicely, and it just keeps everything out of the way. That way I don't have to have a C-stand or anything like that and keep moving it in. I just, when I'm done, fold it up against the wall and it stays there. For the camera, I just use a small little small rig magic arm with an Arca Swiss quick release on the end of it and that holds my phone just fine. Now I do have an extension tube that you'll probably see in the shot, the b-roll of this. Since I moved my desk to the back over here, that is obsolete. I just haven't had the chance to take it down. I kind of forgot about it. And then for the microphone at the end of this thing, I just use a newer magic arm. I think it's an 11 inch magic arm. Doesn't have the greatest retention. Even for something light like a microphone, it does not seem to hold it very well. You really got to reef it down. So I'll look at something better than that. Maybe not from newer this time. Another thing I forgot to mention here is sound deadening. For my studio here, I'm in a basement. It's not the greatest acoustically, but I did set up these things here. They're just DIY sound panels. Like these things were 
super easy to make. They were just two by four frames with rock wool stuffed inside with landscaping stuff. And then I covered them over with a nice fabric. And then I have the cheap little two inch foam panels that I have stuck everywhere. I don't know if they've honestly done anything, but they look kind of nice. So on the far side behind the camera here, I actually have a couple of moving blankets set up across just an extendable construction pole. Clip to that with spring clips. Gives it a little bit cleaner dead sound in here. Final item we have today is the microphone. It's probably the most important bit. Without good audio, the videos, nobody will watch them. It just doesn't happen. So what I use is the SE Electronics SE7. So this is a small dial diaphragm cardioid condenser microphone. It's a pencil mic, what they say. This microphone has been great. I love the way it sounds. I barely have to touch anything post. It's a little quiet, so I do have to adjust the levels sometimes. That should be about it. I think I covered all my bases there. So if you guys like videos like this, stick around. I have lots more on the channel, a lot of EDC stuff, a lot of uh, daily carry and daily use things and then some outdoor gear stuff as well. Thanks again for watching. Please consider subscribing if you like this, and we'll see you guys on the next one. And we'll guys, we'll see you, holy cow, four different times I set up and then I, <laughs> it was just not going my way here. There's a lot of information there too. I kept messing up. Back to EDC in the next one. All right, see you later.